Um, good evening, Mr. Bullard. Um, I have a question regarding, since you joined the Fed in um, 2008, the Fed did quantitative easing for, I think, a 14-year period. And you had an unprecedented um, uh, situation in COVID in which the Fed got involved and began expanding the money supply uh, to the point where I think 80% of all US dollars in existence were printed over the course of two, three years. Um, you, the Fed also uh, purchased government uh, and uh, corporate bonds in 2020 as an extraordinary measure for the first time in history. Um, by adopting a zero rate uh, policy, um, you had QE infinity, essentially, and you had a quite expansionary monetary policy like never before. So um, where I'm going with this is, do you think that there was reluctancy amongst the other FOMC members to raise rates to a sufficiently restrictive level? Um, they were saying, oh, it's transitory, it'll come down. Um, I think you and uh, Loretta Mester were some of the most hawkish members on the FOMC for a while. Um, I would recall when you would go on CNBC and give your remarks on a more hawkish point of view, I would get notification, Bullard says this, market was down a few hundred points. Um, do you think there was Sorry, a... Sorry, man. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, exactly. So do, do you think that there was reluctancy because of these unprecedented measures and nobody at the Fed really knew despite having you know 300 economists or 400 and that have all these predictions. <clears throat> Nobody knew what the outcome would be um, yeah. because you just injected trillions of dollars into the system that maybe went above what was necessary. Yeah. So I mean, I'll give you uh, uh, where I think the source of inflation was for this, uh, this time around. So all those years between 2009 and 2019, we really have any inflation to speak of. And if anything, inflation came in below the target, the 2% target. So we're doing all these things, uh, not just in the US, but globally uh, to try to get inflation to be at the 2% target. Um, obviously that after the pandemic, then that all went out the window. Why? I think, um, <clears throat> so, I've spoken in other venues about this. I'll give you the, uh, the, the condensed version here. You should think of the pandemic as a war. Uh, it wasn't a hot war, but it's, it's a social upheaval. And when there's social upheaval, what happens? The government starts spending a lot of money without asking too many questions about where the future taxes are gonna come from. So you get deficit spending. And this was deficit spending on a grand scale, on the scale of a third of GDP. And uh, the other thing uh, is that they asked the central bank to keep interest rates low to support the war effort. So this is the, this is the formula across history, economic history, all kinds of different times and places, different institutions, different people, different situations, but that formula almost always generates inflation. So when you look at the uh, global pandemic as a war and you look at what the US reaction was, heavy deficit spending, keep interest rates low, well, yeah, it's gonna generate inflation and that's exactly what happened. Um, and especially, I think the initial response in March, April of 2020 might have been calibrated uh, about right for the scale of the disaster that we had, but then you had extra uh, uh, fiscal deficits in December, uh, a big bill in December of 2020, uh, because both parties were worried about the Georgia election. And then another big bill when the Democrats came to power in March of 2021. So these two last bills were uh, actually at a point where the, uh, the recession was ending and the, uh, the pandemic looked like it was gonna come to a close because you had uh, vaccines coming in in the spring of 2021. So all this is to say is that this went too far and, uh, and then we kept interest rates low in uh, as well. So you got a lot of inflation out of that. How do you get rid of the inflation? You have to go back to orthodoxy, back to the pre-pandemic policy. So you have to quit the deficit spending US did that, not really by design, but 
because you have divided government. And once you have divided government, they aren't going to agree on uh, big spending bills anymore. So that happened uh, in uh, uh, the 2022 elections. And then in addition, the central bank has to get serious about uh, keeping inflation under control. You raise the policy rate a lot, all the way 500 basis points, all the way up above 5%. Uh, which was very high for this era. Lo and behold, both those things happened. Boom, inflation came back down. So that's my story about what happened uh, in this particular episode. So.